Welcome to Moral Politics. I'm your host, Bill Walford. We discuss Jewish identity politics. Israeli author Gilad Atzman provides deep insights into Jewishness and its politics in his riveting book, The Wandering Who. The author pulls no punch. He exposes tribal focus for what it is. He lays bare the contradictions that trouble Jews and Judaism in today's world. The book is well researched, well written, and under considerable attack. Joining me to discuss The Wandering Who is returning guest, Dr. Ibrahim Saudi. Welcome. Thank you, Will. Dr. Saudi, did you find the book, The Wandering Who, as astounding as I did? It's a very controversial book. Uh, I think it's a uh, uh, worth reading and uh, discussing. I think it, uh, it has created waves already. Uh, it has been under attack. And quite frankly, it might get you and I in trouble for just discussing it. Well, he does untangle what has been taboo in the West, is discussion about Jew, Judaism, and Jewishness. It, in fact, I'm not aware of any book uh, written by a Jew to actually uh, uh, dissect and discuss the, the, uh, uh, the politics of uh, some uh, Jewish people in that depth. Uh, mm -hmm. So in that regard, I think it's a, land, uh, it's a landmark book. Well, how does uh, the author Gilad Atzman in his book, The Wandering Who, define the Jew? Well, he refers to uh, uh, two categories of people that he is not talking about. Uh, number one is the Jew who is a Jew just because he or she was born to Jewish parents. Uh, the other one is a Jew who is a Jew because he or she follows the Judaism as a religion. Uh, but the other one, he refers to uh, the mix, if you will, between Zionism and, and uh, Jewishness uh, and how it's uh, more of a tribal ethnicity kind of thing rather than being part of humanity. Almost overlaps completely with Zionism. It, it's the vehicle that Zionists succeeded in, uh, in actually making sure that the vast majority of the Jewish people would be supporting the ideology itself. Well, yeah. specifically, what, I what does the author Yulan Atzman say is Jewishness? Taking to that tribal racial uh, issue rather than being part of humanity. And I, I, is this where the, that identity is foremost, is put above all other traits? Oh, well, for sure, yeah, because once you consider yourself as superior to the rest of human beings uh, as chosen people, then uh, th that in itself will, will build that identity as the most and uh, most important aspect of your character. How does the author Gilad Atzman really uh, assess Jewishness? Y yeah, uh, he, he considers it a very negative, uh, has a very negative impact on the Jewish people. Uh, uh, as a, as a, a corrosive factor, if you will, because uh, it separates them from the rest of humanity, if you will. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, he does cite Heim Weizmann. He has a, a citation in there. This is the first uh, president of Israel, a very ardent Zionist. Yeah, and uh, uh, the citation is, uh, th there is no such thing as a French Jew or a German Jew or a, a British Jew. There is a Jew who lives in France or a Jew who lives in Germany or a Jew who lives in Britain, uh, which puts th the issue of being a Jew above the issue of what nationality you are from. Uh, now, a, a bit about the author. Uh, he, didn't he serve in the IDF? Yeah, he, he was a soldier himself, in the, uh, like any other Israeli, because it's compulsory, compulsory uh, service himself. And the part of his background, he, his uh, grandfather was part of the Ergun, uh, terrorist, non-terrorist organization that had so many crimes. I think uh, Menachem Begin was part of the same organization. Uh, and uh, he, he was taught, like almost every other uh, Jewish child, that uh, Jews... Uh, 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 are somehow uh, chosen people and... Uh, I remember uh, reading a quote uh, that he said that his grandmother uh, awakened him to the revival of Jewishness or the 
the, the, the greatness of Jewishness and how that supremacy was brewed in their soul, I, I, that stuck with me. Yeah, yeah but I, I uh, think that this is not just limited to him. I think this happened in quite a large number of, uh, of uh, Jewish children. Ultimately, what is Jewishness attempting to do? Well, again, it's, it's a matter of uh, trying to uh, create this uh, uh, barrier that separates Jews from the rest of humanity and prevented the assimilation. We have to understand, are they a race, are they an ethnicity, or what? Well, he, he, well, he, he refers to Professor uh, Shlomo Sand in his book, The Invention of the Jewish People. He, did, he does spend a lot of time on Jewish trauma. Can you comment on that? The word that's most associated with the Jewish people is, is victimhood or suffering. You hear that quite a bit, Jewish suffering, mm -hmm. as if uh, uh, nobody else suffered uh, and as if uh, uh, the, the Zionist Jews of Israel are not causing suffering themselves to other people. And again, so, this is a phenomenon that you would find whether you're uh, just biologically a Jew, whether you are religiously a Jew, or whether you have bit in the apple and you are into Jewishness or Zionism. Yeah, wh whether you really suffered or not as a Jew, uh, suffering is supposed to be part of your uh, your character, if you will. And, and this, uh, I think in his words, he's using the word trauma uh, mm -hmm. as, as part of, n not that uh, the Jews did not suffer uh, uh, in their history, but uh, w well, uh, there are other people who suffered maybe even more. Well, I remember uh, reading that, that, that a point that he makes about how Jews kind of ritually reenact their suffering, where they ritually uh, go through Holocaust trauma. Well, in fact, actually, the, the uh, thinking of the Zionist Jews, even today, and I think in the future it will be the same, uh, is that there is next Holocaust, there is next pogrom, there is next uh, trying to get rid of us, and, and that's why the the vast majority of the Jewish people support uh, the state of Israel, uh, even even if they do not agree with what it does. Yeah. Now, he does make a comment that, that stuck with me about this is kind of a flight to fantasy to avoid moral reflection. Do you think there's much truth to that? Well, I think it's always easy when you think of yourself as a victim, because that makes the others wrong anyways. Yeah. So it's a, I, I think he's very right in that expression. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's turn to the religion. Judaism itself. What does the author Gilad Atzman have to say about that? No, religion is religion. Religion is the teachings of the prophets and the, uh, that has nothing to do with the uh, ideology of Jewishness or uh, Zionism and the relationship between of them. So he makes that very clear mm -hmm. uh, that he is not trying to uh, attack anybody who is a Jew just because they follow that particular religion. But he does make a comment about the violence of the Old Testament. Oh, well, th this is very true and uh, you look at the Old Testament and it's uh, uh, full mm -hmm. of uh, verses and uh, uh, incidents and uh, things that relate to violence. And but, no, it's you know, the, the, the religion, the J Judaism now, as distinct from Zionism, the Judaism itself does does shape the discourse, even among secular Jews, and certainly among the settlers in Israel. But that's another aspect of it that that even secular Jews, when they argue for the uh, state of Israel, they say that it's given to them by God. Mm -hmm. So here you have secular Jew who does not believe in God, but when it comes to uh, arguing for the state of Israel, it says God gave it to them. Uh, but he makes a strong point in the book about the settler in occupied yeah. territory. He has to believe that he is the son of Abraham entitled to this land. Yeah, that, that's, that's very true. But that's, uh, that's uh, the very foundation of the, the concept of uh, uh, the Jews are, are given this land by God. Yeah. Now, we've discussed the Jewish identity a bit. Certainly, the, the, the book can give the, re the, the, the details on it. However, we'll turn now to the the politics of that Jewish identity. And Herzl made an interesting quote, getting superpowers. Oh, no, no, this is, this is the, the, the means, this is the vehicle that Zionism uses in order to achieve its goals, is not to do the thing itself, but tries to use the superpower of the day to achieve its goals. 
the British uh, uh, armies and the American armies have turned out now to be doing the job for for Israel, not for anybody else. Well, the big question is why are we? Why are the UK? Why why is the USA following this kind of ethnocentric ideology? Of well, there are there are reasons for that, but the most obvious one is that uh, uh, you look at the American politics, for example, now, and uh, uh, you find that uh, uh, the uh, nominees for the uh, uh, president uh, are financed by by Zionist Jews uh, that are keeping them in the race. Uh, in fact, one of them is financed by. Uh, uh, a Zionist who owns uh, uh, a gambling empire, and it's very obvious that if it were not for that Zionist supporting him, he would not be in the race. To You're talking about uh, Sheldon Adelson of the yeah, yeah, Hotel. Yeah, yeah, who is uh, single-handedly almost financing the campaign of the former Speaker of the, the House. Newt Gingrich's uh, campaign. Uh, yeah, 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 and it's, a, it's a very, very obvious. Yeah. And then on the Democratic side, also Obama is supported mm -hmm. by Zionist Jews from... Uh, from uh, Chicago. But in the, in the book, Gilad Atzman mentions the so, uh, Haim Saban formula. The three things that you need to do in order to get control of the politicians, I think it's uh, donations and uh, uh, thinking tanks and also having a great deal of power over the media. Uh, and I think, yeah, that, uh, that trilogy covers the thing very well. And as you just mentioned, there are a number of other uh, brothers and sisters in this band of brothers and sisters that are, you know, rich, zealot Zionists yeah, that yeah, are following uh, that I think Haim are, Saban formula. I think they are very successful. They are smart, doing it smartly. Uh, they make the politicians, uh, like, line up uh, to kiss their shoes, if you will, uh, for some uh, cash. Uh, what, what accounts for Jews having so much influence beyond their numbers? Oh, well, the, the number, and, and w one time I was talking to a Jewish lady in an interfaith event, and uh, I was asking her about the number of the Jews in the world, and, and then she said, yeah, we might be only 15 million or so, but we are very mighty. So the thing is not the number, the thing is how much influence you, can, mm -hmm. you have. And if you have a, a, a very powerful organization like APAC, that can threaten any member of the U.S. Congress, uh, will uh, uh, that enough uh, is enough to control the U.S. Congress? And uh, uh, maybe it's uh, like, I don't know if you have seen that cartoon or not, but uh, maybe we can show it to the viewer. Uh, and uh, as you can see it, if, if it's on the screen, you can see that uh, uh, the prime minister of the Jewish state is uh, wearing a, a T-shirt with APAC symbol and name on it. Uh, and uh, the president of the United States is a dog and uh, is being trained by the prime minister of the Jewish state mm -hmm. uh, using a ball uh, in the form of the head of uh, the state of uh, the, the head of the head of the state of Iran, mm -hmm. uh, which symbolizes actually the, the Zionist Jews are now using the superpower as an attack dog mm -hmm. to, be, to go get the enemy that's mm -hmm. uh, perceived to be Iran. The, the lobbies. He just calls them the lobbies and he uh, cites several examples, a APAC being one, but how they are dictatorial over the language, setting up what is politically correct, creating the pretense of friendship with America, creating the uh, illusion of liberalism. But it, he says yeah, it's yeah, not they, real. they use the correct language like democracy. However, actually, they are very apartheid system in, uh, in the Jewish state itself. Just by the name of it, uh, Jewish state, that right away mm -hmm. says that it's racial, which means apartheid. Mm -hmm. uh, but they talk about uh, universal mm -hmm. values and the human rights and things like that. And they are the biggest violators of, uh, of human rights. And, uh, uh, so, so, but but the point to start uh, with is that they, uh, uh, they they use the correct language and the right tools in order to uh, uh, control or manage the uh, the discourse, if you will, and, and the superpowers. Uh, and, and it always starts by uh, planting the fear in the people that any criticism or any language that you use that we do not agree with will be made by the accusation right away that you are anti-Semitic. And that in itself actually scares most people and mm -hmm. makes them 
uh, be very careful about what they say. Or, or most or of the time, actually not say what they really want to say. Or, or Alan Dershowitz might, might trash your well, book. Yeah, those, the those are the attack, uh, that you attack, uh, the attack dogs that will come after you if you say anything they do not like. What, what about this other s strategy that these lobbies serve, these, these, these potential whistleblowers that, that are Jews, that try to leave the, the fold, more or less? Well, those are not many uh, to start with, and and they they are always uh, uh, get described as either self-hating Jews or uh, and and that's a role of the lobbies though to go collect those lost it, souls. Personal attack and discrediting the the person they do not agree with is the main uh, weapon they use. But then, wh how does he treat Jewish socialism, Jewish progressiveness, and and left left, right, and center Jewishness and Jews for this and that? What, what does he make of all of that? Uh, it's a strange, actually, that uh, uh, many Jewish people who join uh, peace activist organizations uh, join it uh, with, with the aim in the first place to make sure that uh, no harm comes to Israel. Like they become like the gatekeepers or the first line of defense uh, against anything harming uh, Israel itself. So uh, kinship uh, over... Any, over principles. Again, this goes back to oh, the definition uh, of Jewishness, <coughs> that trait above all other traits. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, when it comes to the people who support Israel, like uh, uh, Rosenblum and others, who will tell you that uh, having Israel as a Jewish state is far more important than democracy and the human rights. Now, a really controversial area that he goes into is Holocaustianity. Can you describe he considers it to be the religion of Zionism. If, if uh, Judaism is a religion of the Israelites, uh, Holocaustianity is a religion of the Zionists. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's something in there that has temples and it has pilgrimage and it has uh, priests and prophets and so on. Uh, and it sets the, the whole establishment for uh, Zionism itself to become uh, an ideology and almost a religion replacing Judaism itself. Uh, it has the sacred mountain, APAC. Where, uh, wh well, it, <laughs> it has everything. It has pilgrimage. It has... Uh, That's pilgrimage uh, to the Yad Vashem, the Holocaust shrine in Israel. Shri yeah, which is uh, amazingly nearby uh, one of the massacres committed in the creation of the State of Israel. That's itself, yeah, uh, yeah. Dir Yashin. Dir Yashin. Yeah. Yeah. Dir and it, al it also has its antichrist, too, Holocaust deniers. If you look at the Holocaustianity, <laughs> Uh, as a religion, you will find that it has all the elements essential for a religion. Yeah. But he also cites Finkel, uh, Norman G. Finkelstein in his book about uh, the Holocaust calling the Holocaust industry. 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 Yeah, of yeah. course, yeah, because it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it's used, uh, like I said, as a, as a means of spreading a religion, if you will. And the religion sometimes, especially when it's a wrong one, uh, it, it needs a business. It needs a way to collect the donations and, uh, and it stuff. It like. also needs laws to protect it. It's laws now in Europe and, uh, and, and, and I think they are coming to North America that uh, if you deny the, the Holocaust or you even question the facts of the Holocaust, not, not deny it, no, because the Holocaust is a historical fact, but if you dare question the official history of the Holocaust, then you could be subject if to If you look too laws. deep, yeah. you're in trouble. Yeah. yeah. And the question yeah. that he raises is why? This well, is why, why is that? Yeah. In fact, yeah. actually... Uh, there is no other instance of some sort of dogma or history being protected by law. And, and even events like that, uh, they, they should be always open to uh, uh, discovering new facts. He raises the story of Esther in the book of Esther in the Old Testament, the Christian Old Testament. And tell us about that. Well, well it's, it's interesting that uh, <laughs> when uh, Netanyahu was here in, uh, in, uh, in the U.S. last time uh, visiting Obama during the APEC conference, uh, the, the Prime Minister of Israel is leaving with the American President a copy of the book of Esther. Which actually... I uh, wasn't aware of that. No, no, no. He did actually leave a copy of the Book of Esther with Barack Obama, believe it or not. And uh, the book is a fiction. It's a, a work of fiction. 
this is by the admission of uh, scholars of uh, uh, the Old Testament themselves. But there's a moral that he wanted to put across to President Obama. The Zionists are using the superpower or infiltrating the superpower in order to achieve their goal. Mm -hmm. uh, he wants to destroy Iran, but uh, he does not want to do it himself or alone. He wants to drag the superpower with him to achieve his goal. And I think that goes back to the cartoon mm -hmm. that we just looked at, that Obama is a dog and the target or the ball is Iran and the master is the prime minister mm -hmm. of the Jewish state. And, and this is the story of Esther all over again. It, where, it, it's where exactly, yeah, infiltrate the power the and use it yeah. to the benefit of uh, the uh, super people or the chosen people. And just for the benefit of our viewers, that story was about uh, a young girl who, through guile, marries the king of Persia at the time, Xerxes. But it's interesting that Iran, now Persia, Today's Persia is, is in the crosshairs of the Israelites, and she foils a plot against her people, and her cousin Mordecai assumes uh, power as prime minister, and there's lots of revenge and lots of hubris, and it's all fiction. Reminds me with people like uh, Wolfowitz and uh, Richard Peel and Douglas Fife and uh, uh, others who are Zionist Jews who join uh, positions of power in the U.S., uh, and then somehow directed that power to their own uh, yeah. advantage. Well, will. we see that infiltration into power is a very Jewish, or if you would, the, you have to say Jewry, you couldn't, the collective. It's, it's it a, happens in the UK. They're very over overrepresented in the parliament. He makes that point in the book. I, they're yeah. eight times overrepresented in the UK parliament, meaning some groups are, are underrepresented. underrepresented. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, no but, uh, again, I, I, th I think they are very smart. They are playing the game uh, uh, to their advantage. And, and the, the responsibility here falls on us, on the, the citizens of the world, on the citizens of America. But to doesn't wake the story up of and Esther, isn't the moral that sometimes guile and revenge, uh, sometimes fictionalized, sometimes the basis for the wrong reactions and responses is not good? Uh, to them, as long <laughs> as it will reach the goal they want to reach, it doesn't really so matter. So the moral is, is what's good for the Jews it, is it, good. It, what is good for, yeah, is, is exactly that the Zionist Jews will want to achieve their goal, uh, hopefully with the least cost to themselves. If somebody else pays the cost, it's all the better. Yeah. Well, we have to conclude this book, uh, The Wandering Who by Gilad Atzman, a book that's very well written, well researched, and under considerable attack. How would you what, what would you say about Zionism? He gives a whole list of what Zionism is. And certainly it's having other, controlling superpowers or having others do your bidding. It's in a blunt assault on history. Well, Zionism in, in short is, a, is an ideology that uh, uh, is based on preventing the Jews from, beca from becoming part of humanity. Uh, preventing the assimilation of the Jews into humanity. Remaining and, and the other by choice. And you know, considering considering them to be superior to the rest of humanity. And mm -hmm. then, and then uh, uh, regardless of where a Jew is, that Jew should be linked to Zionism or Jewishness before being linked to anything else. He goes on, he talks about the abnormal condition for the, the Jew, for Judaism, and for Jewishness. And he's mentioning, well, racist democracy is one oxymoron. How can you have a democracy that's racist? It's, it's sort of like the, the, the two don't mix, but yet that's what we have in Israel. Um, what are some of the other inconsistencies and contradictions? That well, well it's, it's again, it's, a, it's a, the, the same thing. It's a, 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 for example, a, a having a great arsenal or a nuclear, nuclear weapons, but somehow wanting to attack another sovereign nation who does not actually have nuclear powers mm -hmm. uh, just because they want to expand their own uh, uh, domination of the Middle East, of the area. That's a very clear example of uh, this duplicity, if you will, of, uh, uh, yeah, there might be rules for the rest of humanity, but those rules will not apply to us mm -hmm. if they will stand in our way of being superior to the rest of humanity. Yeah. So that age symmet symmetry is never really reflected upon because People are locked into this security mindset and what's good for the, the Zionist Jews or the Jews is what's good. 
Yeah, yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's in short what the story yeah. is. Yeah. Well, how how right wing is Israel drifting? Tell me where on the planet you will get a a foreign minister like uh, uh, the oh, current one. Uh, a Lieberman. Uh, li yeah, that we, and, uh, can you imagine that that's actually the chief diplomat diplomat of a country that's supposed to be. I believe they be chained him. Uh, to a chair so he can't leave his office or to, something. To, uh, to be the top diplomat of a country that claims to be a democracy. I, I don't he really is, know he how He is to, such uh, an embarrassment. Yeah, apparently. and, and the only reason that he became is because Netanyahu, who is the head of Likud, uh, can only form a government in the Knesset only by giving a high position to the top of uh, a very racist, very uh, uh, extreme uh, 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 party in in. Uh, but they're a band of brothers and sisters. Didn't haven't hasn't the Israeli public voted and and in polls said that they supported the carnage in Gaza. Well, well but again, again, the 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 success of the Zionist Jews is that uh, they use that threat of the other going to attack us and destroy us in order to mobilize the, the people that they control. So uh, I think it makes perfect sense that the majority of the people in Israel would be supporting a slaughter of the people in uh, Gaza because they perceive them as uh, the people who will do the next Holocaust to them or something. But the more carnage, the more slaughter, the more they're separated from the rest of humanity. The well, well this is this is kind of the catch-22 that the rest of humanity will have to deal with. I, I think one of the advantages or the good things about this book is that it might help the rest of humanity try to find a solution for this kind of thinking, of that a group of people thinking on a tribal level but on the other hand, using a language of universalism and, and so on and, and so forth, democracy and all that stuff. Uh, and in the process, they are using the superpower, which they control via, via uh, like you mentioned, the donations to the politicians, the uh, building of think tanks and the, the control of uh, the media. Mm. Uh, this combination of things, uh, I think, will have to be dealt with by humanity itself, by the rest of humanity. Otherwise, the rest of humanity will keep paying the price for the misbehavior of this uh, spoiled child, if you will. Like. Well, the author himself says that when you hear the term Jewish values, you should challenge. And with that, I want to thank you, Dr. Ibrahim Sudi, for a very uh, dynamic, bold discussion on a book by Israeli author Gilad Atzman, who uh, penned the penetrating book, well-written, well-researched, The Wandering Who. We certainly suggest that all who are concerned about the Mideast, about a, a equitable, just peace there, please read the book. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill.